Good morning and welcome to Pleasant View Gardens in Loudoun, New Hampshire. My name is Jessica Tatro and I am the production R&D manager here as well as the garden designer for this beautiful garden. Wanted to give you a quick walk through some of our garden areas today and just showcase what we've been up to. We're going to start with uh, three of our Proven Winners programs that are coming to retail. We're going to talk about our Proven Pollinators area, our Proven Accents area, as well as our Heat is On program for summer plants. And we're going to start first in our pollinator area. I absolutely love this garden. This is a great way to get um, kids involved with gardening. They just love going out and finding the bees and the hummingbirds and the butterflies. And that's the first thing my daughter always asks to see in the garden. Will this plant attract hummingbirds for me? I really want to see them, Mama. So in this garden, we've done a lot of bright colors this year, and I wanted to point out a few of my favorites. If you're looking for hummingbirds in the back here, this is Canna Toucan Scarlet. And this is an absolute hummingbird magnet. One of the other plants, which we will see just a little bit later down the wall, is salvia rock and fuchsia. And the hummingbirds out here just absolutely dive bomb these plants. Hey, fun fact, we just learned that a group of hummingbirds is called a charm, a charm of hummingbirds. I think that's pretty cute. Um, some of the other plants I want to highlight out here, oops, you can see the bees going on this salvia. This is rockin' playing the blues, just going to town here. This is a great plant for the garden. It gets about three-ish feet tall, nice true blue color out here. We don't get that very often with horticultural blue. No need to deadhead them, the color just keeps going and going and going. Over here, another blue flower for the garden is Ageratum Artist Blue. Nice little puff flowers on here, and this is really good for the bees and the smaller pollinators. So it's nice to get a mix of different flowers in here so that you can use some for the um, bees, you need some for the hummingbirds, and some for the butterflies. Down here is Mecardonia Gold Dust. This makes a great carpet out in the garden, just a beautiful um, ground cover of yellow. The key to keeping this one in color is to make sure that you keep it well watered and well fed. But the beauty about this for the bees, as you can see on here, it's got the little landing pads. So that's one of the characteristics for flowers that is really attractive to bees for pollinating. Some of the other flowers that do this, and we'll put some of these plant links down below, is also our Whirlwind series of Scavola. I'll point that out a little later down the wall. and. Um, and the spring gardens, Lobelia, and then just this Mecardonia. So beautiful yellow color for the garden. I love getting the nice contrasts in here. Also in this container, I'll point out we have Pentis. This is um, Sunstar Red, and there are four colors available in the series. And then one of my other favorites up here, this is uh, Verbena Meteor Shower. Just an absolute favorite. The cool thing about this plant is that it is a Verbena bonariensis, but this was selected for being seed sterile, so it is not going to take over your garden, which is a good thing. A few other plants down here to highlight. Just absolutely love how all the reds and the yellows and the oranges play together here. This is a new lantana for us this year. If you can see the red color in here. This is Luscious Royale Red Zone is a little bit more compact, so it stays where you plant it, and it doesn't take over the garden. The other great thing about this, especially for southern gardens, is that it is certified seed sterile through the program in Florida. So it's gone through the rigors of being sterile and able to be sold on market. It, there's only a couple on the market that do that, and we're really, really excited to bring this to market. Just look at that red color there playing together. Also in this mix, if you're a lover of orange flowers, this is Kufia vermilionaire, another great plant for the hummingbirds. And then right down here in the front is Biden's Campfire Flame. And these flowers will transition. You can see all the transitioning in here through the season. And so it's just great to see all of this coming through and adding a nice vibrant color. This will continue to bloom until fall, so you get that nice rich color going into the cooler weather as well. Another favorite in here, whoops, there we got another pollinator. 
not your typical one, but you've got to take care of all of nature's critters. Uh, this is Gallardia, heated up yellow, and we just introduced that last year. So just looking through here, these are some of the annual plants that we have planted together for our pollinators, and you can just see them go into town here. So it's something great that I like to see is bringing nature into the garden and getting kids involved and know that you're doing something to help out. Uh, if you need more information on this program, just leave a comment below or check our website and we will be glad to pass that along to you. Also wanted to point out, sorry, we have some perennials here. So you can use both um, annuals, perennials, and color choice shrub to bring pollinators into your garden. And just a quick highlight, everybody knows what this one is, but this is butterfly bush. But the neat characteristic about this one, it is pugster blue. So it's a compact butterfly bush. So it stays where you plant it, not the old fashioned ones that get up three, four, five, six feet tall. This one is nice and compact, stays about two, two and a half feet tall, right where you plant it. And it's another beautiful lilac color. Mixed with it is um, Achillea. This one is amethyst, just coming into color here. And we've got nice transitioning as it goes through the season. And just coming into color here is sedum. And this one is um, bundle of joy. So great way to get season long color out of your pollinator garden. We're gonna move next over to our proven accents area. And proven accents is where we've taken our foliage plants and group them together so it's easy to find in the garden center and it's a great way to add texture and color to your gardens and even looking through here there's not a sink well one flower but there's no flowers planted in here and yet you can see just how beautiful it is and how the, all the colors and the textures play together one of my favorites just look at it trailing down here this is dichondra silver falls and this is just an absolutely beautiful plant for containers, for pottery, for window baskets, window boxes, hanging baskets. Um, you've also seen some posts by Laura on Garden Answer and other people on YouTube where they're making the jellyfish planters. This is the plant that's trailing down out of it. So it'll just keep going and going and going. This is one plant here, people. Fantastic. Another plant in the silver family up here, this is Artemisia Silver Bullet. And this one is just an absolute phenomenal plant for the landscape. You can see the width that it's getting here. So actually next week we're gonna come through here and just tip these back a little bit so it doesn't overgrow its friends. Nice and easy. You can see all the branching continuing to come on this, but a great way to add some silver texture into your garden. One of the popular gardening trends right now is um, moon gardens, and this would be a great plant to fit into that niche as well. Coming through here, I did mention one flowering plant, but it's also with the silver foliage, so it fits that same concept. This is Lamium Pink Chablis, and it is a perennial. It's been hardy up here in zone five, so it just comes back year after year, so we get just a little bit of color in here. Moving on to some of the chartreuse plants in here. I'm going to sneak back here. This is Salvia Golden Delicious. The common name on this is Pineapple Sage. So when the wind blows, you get a wonderful smell throughout the garden. This will produce red flowers, but only under short day conditions. So you're only going to get flowers on this late in the fall. Um, up here in New England, we typically will get them middle of September or so, so planted more for its foliage than for the flowers, but a great way to add some color and some height into your garden, and this pairs really well with uh, coleus. Also in this collection, let me just set these down here, pick them up later, um, is Ipomia, sweet potato vine. The great thing about this plant is it will take full sun, it will take shade, it transitions through the garden beautifully. And the neat thing about our Sweet Caroline series, as well as the Illusion series, is you're getting these different leaf shapes on here. Just look at the size of these leaves. We've got this one, we've got this one. There we go. So this is our traditional Sweet Caroline series with the traditional leaf for the Ipomia. 
Then you have our Sweet Caroline Bewitched, which has this crown leaf shape to it. And then this is our Illusion series with the deeply lobed sections of the leaf. So depending on which one you choose, you've got different leaf shapes as well as different leaf colors to add to your garden. Um, sometimes people say, hey, my sweet potato, it's too aggressive, what do you do? You just go in and whack it. Just whack it right off and put it back to the shape that you want it to. So don't be afraid to pinch it back. Great way to keep your plants in check. Got to have all your friends playing nicely together. What else did I miss in here? Oh, this has been around forever. You, some people think of it as a, a graveyard planter because you typically see it with the Dracaena spikes as well as um, geraniums, pelargoniums. But vinca vine is a great way to add some trailing elements to your containers. And the vinca vine actually is available with three different leaf colors. So this one is um, maculata, where it's the green on green. You've got your traditional vinca vine in here, which is the green with the cream. And then my favorite's a little slower growing, but it really adds a pop of color. Up here is Wojo's Gem. So there's three different leaf colors that are available, and it's just a great way to add a trailing element to anything. So that's just a highlight of some of the plants in here. Feel free to um, contact us if you need a list of what's in the program or reach out to us for more grower details. But Proven Accents is a great way to add some color and texture to your gardens. And our last program we're going to talk about, I'll sneak on over here, is our Heat Is On program. And what we wanted to do was put together a collection of plants that were great for the hot weather. Because we're up here in New Hampshire and even though you think of us as a cool climate. We've been a lot of days in the 90s this summer, so we need plants that will strive up here. But we realize that there's a lot of gardeners that are down in the southern and western portions of the United States, and it also gets pretty darn hot in the Midwest in the summer as well. So we want plants that are going to be tough and sturdy and stand up to all those weather conditions. So all the plants in this grouping will take the heat, will take the humidity, will take the full sun and just keep on rocking and providing you color all summer long. Some of the plants to highlight in here, one of my absolute favorites, ooh, and you can see the little pollinators on it. This is also really good for butterflies. This is Gumfrina truffula pink, and it just keeps going and going and going. No need to clean the flowers off of it because you can actually cut these and take them inside for dried flowers. So the flower color just stays on this plant all season long. As soon as you get one, it just keeps self-branching and providing a lot more. And in this container, I've decided to mix it with some other um, plants in the pink family. So this is the rock and fuchsia that I mentioned earlier. It's a really great pollinator plant, especially for hummingbirds as well. Down here is another lantana. This is Royale Cosmo. So this is in that same series as Red Zone. So these are a little bit more compact for the gardener, but still a fantastic show of color. And this one is in the pink and yellow family instead of the oranges and the reds. Down here in the front, an absolute beautiful plant. And I'll have Nathan grab a shot of this at the end of the video where we've planted it in the landscape. But this is Sedum Lemon Coral, and it keeps this color all season long. The more sun you give it, the more yellow it's going to be. Really drought tolerant, great landscape plant. And over here, tucked in the corner, I overplanted these a little bit because we needed a really good show, but we'll give a little maintenance out here. This is Hippo Rose. Um, you might know it as polka dot plant and just a fantastic coloration pattern on the leaves here. Some other plants to have. Ooh, can you capture this? Look at the size of that flower. This is a perennial hibiscus, and this one is Summerific Evening Rose. I believe it's new this year, but just look at those beautiful hot pink rose flowers against that burgundy leaf. It's a great color pattern to add to the garden. And that flower is huge. You can make fun of me, but... Come on! Oh no! 
trying to show you guys the size of it. It doesn't want to go. It's almost as big as my head. So these flowers will open for a day and then fall off, but just look at all the buds. So you're going to have season long color for these. Um, the first week of August was actually hibiscus summerific week. So we'll put a link below to all the different summerific varieties that are available on the market. But just absolutely love the coloration on this one. We'll set it right here so we can enjoy it. Ooh. Um, coming around, don't forget that hydrangeas are also a really good summer plant. This one is a uh, little lime and it's in a container, but in the garden that will get up about five feet tall. So that's the smaller version of limelight if you want to capture it right over here. Whoops, we got an irrigation sprinkler going. Got to keep your garden watered, but that is a limelight that's been out here for over 10 years and we give it a trim each year and it just comes back beautifully. So we've got two different sizes just depending on how much space you have in your garden. One other tough as nails plant right here in the front is Euphorbia Diamond Frost. Um, if you are, you may not realize this, but Euphorbia is related to poinsettias that you get in Christmas time. And the coloration that you see on there is actually a bract, a modified leaf and not a flower. So if you look in here where you're getting all of the color, those are your bracts. And then right up there in the front is the little tiny flower. So it's really dainty and, and looks like it won't take the conditions, but this thing is absolutely tough as nails. So it does great mixed in um, container recipes, and it also does really well in the landscape. Oop, and we got another bee coming in here. Great to see all of this action in the garden. And the last plant to highlight, because I did mention this earlier, is Scavola. Let me get this chair moved out of the way. Whirlwind Starlight, actually, excuse me, this is Whirlwind Blue. Uh, Whirlwind Starlight is our new variety for next year. But you can see we've got the nice landing pad here for the pollinators. This makes a great ground cover in the garden, adds another color in that blue family, and as tough as nails. So that's just a quick walk through these three programs. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and we'll get back to you. And happy gardening!